Hello and welcome to another Let's Play, this one for Close Combat, Panthers in the Fog. Now, there are a couple of things you need to know about this game. First of all, yes it does involve tanks, quite a lot of them. And secondly, well you guessed it, there's fog as well. Now, there's a reason to both things, and that's because this game deals with the aftermath of the Normandy landings, 1944, and the German counter-attack, Operation Lutisch. It was an operation that took place over a fairly limited period of time, just a couple of weeks in northern France. And northern France, uh, in the summer, can be fairly foggy. So the developers have gone all out to upgrade the graphics for this version of Close Combat, 32-bit uh, graphics for the first time, uh, with a fog effect which you can use. It adds a bit of atmosphere, um, adds some surprise to the battlefield in places. So, what I've done with this video, to, to make things uh, more straightforward for you, if you're a newbie to the series, start with part one. That's where we go through the interface and basically what the game's all about. Um, veterans, though, should start with part two, which is the full Let's Play. What I've done is set up a 15-minute battle, and we'll play through that and just see how things work out. And just to wrap things up, uh, part three of the video goes into the campaign game, a little bit about the strategic map, the campaign interface, things like that. So, hope you enjoy it. There are timings on YouTube, so you can skip to the bit you like, and um, go do that now. I'll see you there. So hello again and welcome to this section. This is one for the newbies to the series or those people who really just can't get enough close combat, I suppose. Uh, we'll have a quick look at what's happening here. Play the game. Uh, close combat is a, uh, a venerable series, if you like. Um, I last really got to grips with one of these, I think, in 1999. Uh, close combat 3, The Russian Front. Absolutely fantastic game real good sense of history, um, almost like a serious alternative to the Command and Conquer series. Um, the, if you like, the, the conceit of these games is that uh, you can ask your little guys to do things, but if it's stupid, they will quite often turn around and say, no, we're not doing that. Um, there's a morale system in play. Um, so pretty much morale is a key part of your, your attacks. You'll want to uh, move people forward in a supported way. You want to be careful with your attacks. You won't be sort of launching a unit forward to, uh, to do heroics all on its own. Because, quite rightly, real soldiers would um, think twice about going into a really dangerous situation. That's the kind of thing that this game simulates in, in a very accessible sort of way. So, as I say, um, what we've got in terms of campaigns, if you want to play the whole thing, you get the Operation Lutisch uh, Historical Grand Campaign, that's the German counter-attack. And you get the option of playing either the Axis, uh, largely uh, tank divisions, Panzer Grenadier divisions, um, so, um, so, so pretty strong divisions versus Patton's Third Army, and lots of scenarios. What this game doesn't do is give you a vast amount of historical detail um, actually in the game itself. As you can see, you get a minor briefing for each battle. That's because it was um, just a couple of weeks in, uh, in actuality for this particular um, operation. Uh, and all the historical information is A on Wikipedia and B in the manual as well. So you can play the whole thing if you like. You can play the initial attack. You can play uh, some semi-historical battles. You can also play mini campaigns here. We'll have a look at one of those later. And you can play individual battles. Uh, within the individual battles, you can play with a bunch of things. Uh, if you don't want this morale system, which, which is actually one of the strongest points of close combat, but if you don't want it, you can say, you know, turn off um, line of sight. Uh, always see everything about your enemy, always obey orders, don't run away. <laughs> You'll see certainly when I play, a lot of my people run away really, really quickly. So uh, lots of settings you can play with and we'll just dive into one of them so that you can see how they work. This is a single battle. Uh, as you go into the battle you get a chance to swap round who goes into it if you want to. 
I'll just go with the defaults on here. This becomes important with the campaign game. As I say, between maps you have a persistent squad um, and, or a persistent pool that you draw from um, and that becomes quite relevant as your um, forces get whittled down throughout the campaign. I'm going to dive straight into here. I've picked a map with fog on. Uh, this is the first iteration of the Close Combat series that has 32-bit uh, graphics and they really use them um, in a huge way to um, simulate fog. Now as we play through I will turn this fog effect off. Um, you can see here it's it's a pea super isn't it? Absolutely you would not want to be out walking the dog on a day like that. Um, so quickly explain some of the interface elements. I'm not going to play through this map. Um, I will just explain the interface. You can see there I have a tank. It's an M4 Sherman. Hard to see in the fog. Um, adds atmosphere and a certain amount of surprise to the game in places I have to say. So the interface, what have we got? Uh, top left this is your quick selection bar. Uh, gives you a uh, colour coded view of how your teams are doing. Your teams pretty much are like a traditional RTS, um, almost Command and Conquer style game if you like, in that you select them and move them. And uh, default order is always move, you can click and drag to make that happen. Alternatively, you can select a team and you can use hotkeys. So if I were to go off screen here, there's a move key with a hotkey. That becomes really useful later on. Uh, you have hotkeys for move, hotkeys for move fast, hotkeys for, hotkeys for aim, fire, lob smoke, all that kind of thing. The traditional close combat way of moving is by right clicking and then selecting um, what you want, fire for example, and dragging out a bar to do that. So if I wanted to fire on that cemetery there, you can see it's 300 meters away. The line is brownish red, means that no, there's no chance of hitting it. And the reticule on the end is very tiny, um, meaning that it would be ineffective anyway. So I've asked them to do that, uh, but that's pointless. You can group and um, give collective orders that way. Um, the interface is a bit of a throwback to early days of this, uh, this particular series. Quickly show you that waypoints are possible too and you have to use them. Um, pathfinding wasn't great in real-time strategy games in the mid and late 90s. That is something that's still uh, apparent with this particular game. You really have to be careful with your tanks so you don't get them stuck on scenery. Not a big problem actually. So that's that interface, good for selecting um, and working out the status of your team. In the middle you've got a morale bar. You can see that we're playing the uh, Americans here. Um, that is their morale, goes right the way to the middle. Um, Germans here, that's their morale too. I've switched off the timer for the game. You can play single battles if you want to, give them a time limit anywhere up to an hour. Uh, I prefer to take my time. The reason I take my time is to use this mini map down here. Um, let's expand that. You can see tons of victory locations on here. The game is about driving down enemy morale. There's a point of that. Let's, uh, let's go and look at that. So, there is a Panzer 4H. Um, yep. I'm going to give that one a wide berth. Um, so the game is about driving down enemy morale. It's also um, about taking victory locations. If you play the campaign game, you'll want to take these because that is terrain that you own for next time you play this map, if you're playing it over several goes. So uh, there's the map. You can command from this map as well, if you want to. So that's kind of cool. What else? Uh, right hand side, if I'm to select a unit, ah, Grenadier, uh, they're Germans. Uh, let me call these guys up. My rifle team here. You can see I know their names. This is the um, the human element of this game. Riley is their leader. He's healthy. He's got a machine gun by the look of it there. Bray is a gunner, Sumner and Moylan. They're all doing good. They're all in green here. You'll see as we get into the game itself, as they take fire they can be pinned, they can be wounded, they can be out of breath and that affects their speed, it affects how effective they are, it affects whether they run away as well. 
and you can also see here I get a little look at how effective this team are in various situations. They're experienced, anti-tank they're moderate up to mid-range, they're rubbish at long range. Anti-personnel they're great close to, or right-ish mid-range, terrible at long range. Here we've got some uh, messages. So we can get messages here. You can see actually it's saying that the Panzer is incapacitated. Uh, these guys are pretty smart. They will act on their own. Even though I've not given them any fire commands, uh, the movement is taking... They, they're essentially moving and working out who to fire at for themselves as they're doing it. AI, not too bad in this game at all. Uh, final bit of interface to talk about. Um, we don't have it in this particular map, but you can have air support. Uh, off-map mortar support. Also you can have in-map mortar teams and they're great um, and off-map artillery as well. So that's the interface. Um, what you can't see because of the fog effect is just how detailed this map is. I mean it is glorious. Um, there are so many tactical possibilities on these maps. That is the strength of the series. It's why veterans of the series come back to them. Yes, it would be lovely to zoom in um, and, and see more detail. That's not possible. Um, yes, it would be, to be, be good to have a slightly um, more modern interface for moving these guys. That's, that's still not there. But the reason people keep coming back is just because the line of sight, terrain effects, the the um, the thinking that you have to do behind these maps. So hopefully at the present moment that's giving you an idea of, of what the map's going to look like, where it fits into the overall um, series. What I'm going to do in the next part of the video is we're going to play one of these through, give you an idea of, of how it actually works out. I'm going to switch this fog off so you can see how beautiful it all is and uh, we'll play a game. So stick with me. That's what we're doing next. This is it then. This is the exciting bit. This is the bit where our tiny little virtual soldiers wage tiny little virtual war on their enemies. And if you can see this map, this is the deployment map. Um, what I've done, I've set up one of the operations, essentially a, a small campaign and uh, this is the very first map of it. It's called La Baie Blanche and uh, the deployment map is telling us that we can deploy our teams in any of the super bright areas on the left hand side. We can see into the slightly light areas but we can't see anywhere else on the map. Now what I'm expecting is that if you see the north-south road uh, that's the line of most German resistance. That's what I'm expecting here. That's where I would put my resistance. Uh, but I have a plan. Tell me what you think to it. What I've got is a southern contingent, a rifle team, uh, two rifle teams and a heavy machine gun team. I'm going to move and take the bottom ford here. You can see the, the, the river running north to south, more or less on the left hand side of the map. I then have a northern contingent to go in the north road and I have one rifle team to move in on the middle uh, of the map. We'll see how that works. First of all I want to issue some initial orders, then I will explain my thinking a little bit more um, as everything starts. So I, I've set everybody up, let's begin the map. Okay, the map becomes brighter, but that doesn't mean I can see my enemy. I will only see the enemy when they shoot at me, when my little guys can see the enemy, essentially. Uh, and you can see that that initial deployment is taking place. Here they are, running for the Southern Ford. Now the reason I feel fairly confident in doing that, I personally wouldn't defend that Ford if I were taking up defensive positions. I could be wrong. Uh, this game has a way of surprising you. So I very quickly come in to take this victory location at Pointe de Bois. What else do I have? A whole bunch of people moving in here. Now if the Germans have anybody in Josse then um, they could quite easily um, attack me. And uh, I would be in a bad way there. Again, I wouldn't take um, that location and defend that location too much. I think it's a bit of a sitting duck. Um, so we'll see. Could be I have to eat my words. I'm just moving one rifle team up to there very very quickly. I'm not getting any resistance from there. Um, 
so I think that's okay. Normally, if I were playing this game, I would go very slowly. I would cover my approaches. I would be so very careful. That's really boring to watch in a video. So <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm really going for it in all possible ways. Okay. My next area here is, I think, this southern area. Um... Yves Belek, I suspect that's the name of the man rather than the name of the farm, um, but that seems a good staging point for my true objective, which is Labbe Blanche here. So I would like to take that. Now I can approach that using the li line of sight and cover from these trees. So I'm going to take all of these guys, I'm going to use a quick command to say just, you know, whatever you're doing, get yourself across that field and into that stand of trees. Get yourself in there and let's see what you see. Okay. I've got three of them selected together, which is why the dots are moving as the three. What I probably need to do is unselect some of them here if I want to be a little bit more precise where I want them to end up. Okay. So my rifle team has ended up here. That's excellent. Let's lob some smoke into that field just to make sure that anything is covered. If there's any Germans down here at this house or in, along here, smoke is going to help me out. Smoke please boys. Right, um, similarly I'm just going to get one team, only the one team, and move them really quickly to Les Granges, just here. Okay, normally as I say I would sneak along while I was doing this. I'm also going to move our team up to Lieu de Bagnard, I think. It may not be pronounced that way, but let's let's give it a go. I'm going for victory locations here. If I were to fight over this map again, victory locations would mean they would be where I'd start off on this map. Uh, I would have better deployment options. That's why I'm going all out for those here. Not hitting any resistance, so I'm going to take my guys move them to this crossroads. I think I should be fairly safe to do that. Hopefully the German victory location at Lagrange is now moved to a, an American one. It's all looking good. Enemy spotted. Where are you enemy? Typically the first few minutes of any close combat game is spotting the enemy moving around slowly. Taking cover from enemy fire. Okay these guys here are okay there there's somebody up in these trees I imagine uh, because if you look at the right hand side you can get a, a really good idea of what's happening they're winded that's fine because they're moving coward wounded and suppressed um, that's not a good thing so let's get them in that stand of trees hopefully they'll be able to catch their breath there yep do you know why? That's because I caught a little glimpse of two German units just here and I'm seeing um, heavy explosives here. So I think they are supported by somebody. The sensible thing to do here is run away. Run away. Run away really, really fast, boys. Okay. Because they're outgunned. They're outmaneuvered. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so um, enough of that then. Let's move on here. I'm not seeing any resistance here, so I'm thinking I can perhaps move to Yves Belloc. Let's have a quick look at the overview map, see if there's anything I'm missing. You'll see my AT gun is not doing very much. I'm wanting him up here. It could be a t if the enemy has armour we're going to be in a pickle. Um, AT guns being very slow to move up there. Okay, so not much happening at the present moment. I've played this map a number of times. Different things happen every time. There's tons of replayability in this. And that's really because of the complexity of the situation, the complexity of the terrain. Every map is like this. Okay. Well, apart from my poor rifle team here, 
things seem to be fairly quiet, so I'm going to make a push. Uh, what I will do is move all of these guys en masse across here into this field. That will enable me possibly to take Pont Vert and possibly to take this particular house here on the uh, on the bend. Looks a nice house, actually. A nice garden. Lovely field there. Um, probably a prime property. Maybe not because of the railway line. I don't know. I digress. There is some shooting happening from these houses. If that happens anymore and you can get a fix on the enemy, I'm going to lob a mortar on their heads. At the present moment, I'm just looking for more information before I do that. Up. Rifle team killed in action. Yeah, that was the one that I... Yeah, sorry boys. I do apologise. Um, I got you killed. This is actually a lesson to anybody here uh, watching this video. If, uh, if I should be a real general one day, don't ever follow me into battle. And also, if you ever see me on the multiplayer servers, take me on, because chances are you'll probably win. Okay, this is where the action is. Um, as I suspected, this is where everything is happening. Take these houses out, all will be well. I'm going to do something a bit crazy now, and that's move down to that area at the bottom just to take a victory location, because they're important in terms of the way that the campaign plays out. Okay, my mortars are horribly inaccurate, but they are at least starting to uh, get on the on the case. That must be German mortars, surely. Yep, yeah, it is. It's German mortars or some other kind of explosive. Get yourself out of there, lads. Get yourself into that house. turning into a minor slugfest. Now you can see from the morale bar in the centre, the German morale bar is much longer than mine, uh, which means I'm probably doing not so well. On, I, can, I get two indications of that on the left hand side. One is the amber indicator and the other one is that my rifle team is killed in action. In fact you saw that as they are entering Pont Vert, you're seeing that there is some kind of resistance from La Baille Station, or at least that direction there. I hope you're getting the impression that lots of tactics here, lots to watch out for, lots of opportunity to be surprised. My rifle team here is under fire, it's under mortar attack. I want to, I want them out. I want them out of there. Okay, my bottom team is doing well. Let's take them into here, take them back and bring them up for support. Anyone I'm missing out? Can you tell that I appear to be fairly excited by this game. Um, that's the kind of thing it does to you, I guess. Okay, rifle team, I'm taking the long way around given that most of the action is around about here. Hopefully they are going to... Um, Brubaker! What are they saying there? Brubaker is probably running away. Who could blame him? You can see the Germans really are in this central area round about this big loop here where the houses are. I need to get some fire onto them immediately. This is where they are. Let's call up the uh, quick selection menu. Oh no. Now if you can hear the, the sounds of the background, those are my men deserting me. Essentially, uh, let's change that down to there. Um, they're basically saying the horrors of war are too much for them. This rifle team that I wanted to move quickly, they're stunned, they're wounded, they're dead, they're pinned. That's information that's been given to me by the right hand menu. It's turning into a bit of a firefight and it's... I'm coming off slightly worse at the present moment. Normally... Well, I was going to make an excuse there and say that normally I'd be a little bit more studied than what I'm doing. But do you know what? Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. Okay, I'm concentrating his fire on the building there. May need to suppress anybody that's in there, if anybody is still in there. I doubt they are now. Okay, 
Okay, let's take as much area as we can. We're generally doing worse than the Germans. They're in better shape than we are, and I can tell that from the morale bar. But I've so it's a hard fought so far. It's telling me a story. This is the great thing about war games and strategy games for me. When they tell you a story, when you get a real sense of the ebb and flow. That AT gun is just moving up so slowly. Having played this map before, I know there are some panzers in there. Uh, we've not seen them yet. Sometimes they come in faster, some come, sometimes they come in slower. That's just from some prior knowledge I have of the map. Um, I have to say, I'm really chuffed that we haven't seen them so far, because I would be in a terrible state. Fire coming from this building here. Let's get the mortar on it. Also, some fire coming in from here. You'll notice I'm asking my guys occasionally to do things and they're not doing them. The reason being that the game simulates morale, it simulates effectiveness as well. It's not like a typical real-time strategy game. If people can't do stuff, they won't do stuff. Even though you ask them a ten, ten times a hundred times. Lots of explosions happening here. Something is in here, probably by the look of it, German mortars. This central area is becoming really quite hard fought. We're just slugging away at each other and I'm coming off worst. A more cautious approach would have been better. Very traditional, but as soon as I start recording a map for a Let's Play, I do extremely badly. You know what, that's part of the fun of it, isn't it? This rifle team, I would like to move to Labé Blanche, but they... And they're all under fire. Who else do we have? Do we have anybody else down here? We don't. We don't. Oh, what the hell? Let's try and take that location. We've got two minutes left of the game. Could be suicide. If it is, my men will tell me. Go for it again, please. Sensibly, mortars do um, stop firing after a while. They won't keep firing until they're out of ammunition. They'll only fire while you feel it's effective. And you can see the points that they've uh, clocked beforehand. They're slightly faster to, uh, to get a bead on. Okay, so... Yes, indeed. Let me out of here. Rodriguez is panicking, everybody. I know how he feels. I'm doing pretty badly here. Move fast, Rodriguez. Go for it. This, I think, is the beauty of this game. You have to be kind to your little people. If you're not, they don't do what you want. Don't play it like I play it. Tell from the morale bars at the top. 41 seconds left. I would recommend you take that timer off if you're playing. I've just put it there for the video. The morale bars are saying it's just turned into a big old firefight in the middle here. Okay, my rifle team is now in place. Let's move them to these far windows. So they can maybe have a go at these grenadier. Okay. Five seconds left. Okay, and I've come off slightly. Look at the red on the left hand side. Surrendered, killed in action. Well, not my finest hour, but fairly even actually. Um, this is the beauty of this game. Uh, the Germans there, morale 52%, me morale 50%, so it was fairly even. They have slightly more control of the map. The light areas you see there, that's where I will start if I fight over this map again. Uh, we get messages as well. A uh, couple of ways of losing. One is time runs out, and then it checks out the uh, victory location uh, situation. 
Uh, also morale. Um, you can you can end the ma the battle if your morale really goes to the point where you're no not a fighting force anymore. Uh, fairly even here, but I am slightly worse off. The Axis won the battle. They got a minor victory. All in all, it could have gone better. It could have gone better for me. I think if I'd been slower, planned things out a little bit more, covered my approach, given myself more time, things would have been all right. But it's given you an sense of the, the excitement. I, I, I hope um, I hope you find that exciting. I did. Um, let's have a look at some of our guys. Let's have a look at the operation itself, the losses, uh, the results. Yeah, you can get an idea. This this area is still contested in the middle, and that's the battle. Fantastic. So that's where we'll leave that there. Not my finest tower, but pff, well, no, not my finest tower. So we'll leave that there. When we get to stage three uh, of the video, part three, um, we'll have a look at the campaign game and the operational game a little bit more, because one of the great things about this is that that situation is persistent. It will carry on into the next game. I've got one I did earlier for you to have a look at. Um, just have a look at the way the strategic part of um, this particular game works out. See you then. Oh dear. Well, that didn't go exactly to plan, did it? It wasn't bad, but it wasn't brilliant either. Um, so let's have a look at the aftermath. As I said earlier, this was part of an operation, so um, very small scale, but it does actually give me some strategic options as well. So once I've finished that particular map, um, I get to play around on a strategic level on this sort of stylized map to work out which forces I want to take into battle next, where I want to fight next. And it's very like a board game, so I can take my units here, and I can move them backwards or I can move them forwards or whatever. This is a saved game. It may not be exactly the same as the one we just looked at, but I can tell you my the outcome was about the same. Um, so uh, pretty similar looking. So I'm going to retreat. I uh, didn't do so well at this one either. And back up my retreat with a, uh, a plane. So let's do that. Let's see what happens. Very like a board game, we have movement phases, which we're doing the friendly aircraft mistakenly attacked. Oh dear, so that didn't go so well, but I did manage the retreat. Okay, let's click on next. If there was a battle going on now, there would be a battle resolution, we'd be taken to the tactical map. Um, it's a new turn though, and in that new turn the Germans press their advantage. So very soon we will be fighting on the Romani map, just here. Uh, one other thing to tell you, a couple of other things to tell you, if you look at the top left, um, what you can see is an indication of the weather in the battle we're just going to fight. So, as I said, um, a lot of the maps take place first thing in the morning. That's when you get the fog effects. Uh, if we fight with this weather, it'll be clear and dry, so no fog at all. That The clear and dry also affects the movement of your armour, for example. Uh, the other thing is you can select the time. This is just looking forward in time just in case you've got any off-map support happening uh, at any given point and uh, that would appear on the map so you can look forward for what you expect to be happening in the future uh, but the time the uh, the turn will always take place when you expect it to in this case two o'clock in the afternoon let's see what happens shall we it's saying we're in the battle resolution phase and here we are now what you can see is, well, I've got my first rifle platoon. They are half strength at the present moment. Um, certainly the bar team here, um, if we have a look at them, have a look at the soldiers. Some of them are brave, some of them are cowards. I am not surprised given my generalship. I would be a coward too, I suspect. So let's rest those guys and put the third rifle platoon instead. Now what you can see here is in the campaign game it becomes really important because your forces take attrition, they get whittled down, they they need time to heal, they need stuff like that. So your management of your squad, of your, your overall pool of units becomes really important here. Um, so that's the way it works. Just have a very quick look at this map so you can see how it's starting off. Have a look at the overview map. 
Now, as you can see, all of it is light, indicating I can deploy in all of this area. There's a dark area at the top. The Germans are coming to me in this case, so I'm going to be defending. And if you can see there, there are a couple of main north to south, south roads. What I think I would be wanting to do is, well, probably the armor's going to be trundling down this north to south road, so I'll probably want to put my AT gun in there and have a go with it. So, that's the way we're going to leave this uh, Let's Play. Give you one last look at the glorious complexities of the terrain here. Isn't it great? Hopefully it's given you enough of an idea. Hey, that's my anti-tank gun. Give you enough of an idea to know whether this sort of game is for you. If you've played close combat before, it's going to be pretty similar to what you're used to. If you've not, hey you might like it who knows so to end up a couple of votes of thanks first of all to you for watching and uh, thank you very much if you want to leave a comment on the video please do it was comments on the last video that meant i wanted to do another one so so thank you thank you to you for watching thank you to the previous people for leaving comments and subscribing and doing all that stuff as well that's great thank you guys really appreciate it and the final vote of thanks is to Matrix Games, who of course make all of this happen. And if you want to check this game out, have a look at their online shop and stuff like that, matrixgames.com is the place to go.